Hey everyone, welcome back to FSI DFS. I'm McKinley412, breaking down the small slate for Tuesday. Just two games, it's just kind of weird because typically uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays we'll see those double digit uh, size slates, but because the holiday, Halloween, uh, it kind of really slowed things down across the league. So not much to talk about it, but we'll just kind of dive right in. But before we do, please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up. It really, truly does help us. We are on our way to 5,000 subscribers, which is just unbelievable. I still don't believe that we even have this many subs. Uh, so truly, thank you for all the support that we you have been uh, giving us here. Los Angeles at Toronto, Nashville at Vancouver, Toronto, the bigger favorite, uh, Vancouver also a slight favorite at home, uh, over under six and a half in that first game, six in the next. Uh, projected goalkeepers, again, these are just projected. Uh, Wall has just been unreal so far this season for Toronto with a 961 save percentage that is not sustainable whatsoever. Uh, Lena Solmark led the league last year at a 937. Uh, so it's, it's going to come down. It's just not sustainable at all. And then Talbot and Saros, you'll not Tablot, Talbot, typo there. Um, 905 and 915, those are s solid numbers. I mean, 905 is average, essentially, for an NHL goaltender, so it's not terrible. Uh, he's average. And then 915 is really solid. That's an above average save percentage for a goaltender. But because of the formula and 961 appearing here, really skews things away. But if, say, like, we put Wall down to a lesser number. Well, I'd have to go lower with that. I would need a, a lower number than 901. There we go. Now it's now it's green. But now we just messed everything up, and I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. There we go. Uh, so, yeah. So, let's head over to the line stacks. I did put Nylander, Tavares, and Morgan Riley here uh, as my favorite line stack for Toronto. And I know it's not even the full line. It's just two guys and then the defender with Riley. Matthews, he's over here. He's gold. Um, at least what I think is gold. I am colorblind. Really struggle with colors at times. Uh, but he's gold just because he should be... 90% owned in cash games, given the matchup, given who he is, given the rest of the options that we have on this slate. Uh, so Toronto, they've been on the road for a long time here, I think almost two weeks. Uh, so they're finally returning back home. Matthews, uh, in the first three games of the season where they were all at home, he had two hat tricks, 21 shots on net. Again, he should be absurdly owned in cash games. Even in GPPs, I would still almost play him just because the upside he can bring and the chances of him throwing out a dud I think are very slim uh, but his line mates on either side of him Yarncroc and Marner have just not done really much of anything so far to start the season so I would fully understand a Matthews just kind of one off if you do want to go there or you could even pair Matthews with Nylander or Tavares or guys on that second line because they all do share that top power play unit correlation. So Nylander and Tavares, uh, they've been great together. They seem to be feeding off each other in terms of when one scores goal, very good chance that the other one has an assist to go along with it. So if you are going to be playing one, definitely correlate uh, it with the other guy. And then Riley, I think it's just too cheap at 4.9K. We've actually seen his salary decrease as his production has gone up and he's done pretty well. Uh, Jake McCabe, he got injured for Toronto and it really kind of thinned out their blue line. So they're really asking guys guys like Riley to step up and he saw a big boost in minutes uh, in the game that Toronto played without McCabe and I think that could be a thing going forward. Riley doesn't skate on the top power play unit. He is on that second power play unit there uh, as you can see so it kind of defeats it a little bit uh, but still I think he's fine. Toronto great power play but the Kings also have a great penalty kill to start off the season. The other line uh, I could have gone Vancouver. I could have gone two favorites, but I didn't want to do that. So let's go with a nice GPP play. And I'm going to go with Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Roman Yossi. Uh, same kind of thing. I'm going with the center, winger, and then a top defender. Nashville. They've been sneakily really strong uh, this season. We talked about how uh, they got new coach over there, new management, um, and they're really playing a different style of hockey. But also the big thing is that they're finally healthy. Like they struggled mightily with injuries at the end of last season. So they're finally all healthy. And like I said, Nashville's been kind of sneaky good. If you look at their expected goals percentage, uh, so 50 would be average, meaning at like five on five play, even strength, 
They're scoring, they're expected to score as many as they let up. That would be 50%. They're at 56.25%, which is actually third in the entire league. Uh, They're kind of, you look at the teams around them, Edmonton, Colorado, Pittsburgh, the Kings, Dallas, Boston, like the juggernaut offensive teams that you think of uh, in DFS hockey. They're smack dab in the middle of all of them. Vancouver, they're on the complete opposite side. They're actually the sixth worst. Uh, and they've actually been a little bit lucky here to start the season. So Vancouver is favored. I still think that they should be favored, but it, I do think that it should be a little bit closer. I actually think that Nashville, if you do want to go a money line bet on Nashville, I could totally uh, back that up and understand that. And that's top line, they've actually done really well. Nashville's had three games so far, and in those three games, they've combined for 10 points, three goals, seven assists, and 32 shots on net. Uh, So if they're able to generate something like that again here tonight, I think that Nashville and this top line could be very, very intriguing. Individual plays, I tried to just go one top tier, mid tier, low tier. Um, And even just by doing this, I felt like I was just playing every single person on the slate and I didn't want to do that uh but Matthews he's golden for a reason he's just incredible JT Miller uh for Vancouver 6.5k I could see a couple people going up towards Elias Pettersson but I do like the discount on JT Miller I they've been honestly been producing at a pretty similar rate uh Miller has actually been doing a little bit better actually uh so I do like Miller at 6.5k Especially because Ryan O'Reilly is probably going to be paired up uh, going up against um, Elias Patterson. And O'Reilly, one of the better defensive centers uh, in the league. So it's one of the reasons I am going with JT Miller here. And then Pierre-Luc Dubois, uh, 5K for Los Angeles. Dubois skates on that second line for Los Angeles. He also gets top power play unit uh, time, which is fantastic. Toronto, they've really struggled on the back end in terms of the penalty kill. And then Dubois, uh, like I said, he does get on the second line, but he also has a point in every Los Angeles road game so far this season. He doesn't give you much of a floor, but I think the upside that he does have and can generate at 5K is is worth a peek at. And uh, going to the wing, Mitch Marner, 6.8K. He's just really been a disappointment, all things considered, so far this season. But he still skates on the top power play unit. He still skates alongside Austin Matthews for 17, 18 minutes a game. So you got to have some interest in him uh, in that regard. So 6.8K. He's probably still going to be popular just because he skates on that top part, top line with Austin Matthews. More uh, for Los Angeles. This is the third line for Los Angeles. And I actually really like the third line for Los Angeles as well. If you want to go for another GPP stack, um, it's going to be more Dano and Kaliev. Uh, those three guys, they skate together at even strength. They all skate together on the same power play unit as well. They all have been generating crazy amounts of shots. They got solid floors to them. And a lot of the attention, I think, is going to be towards those top lines of Los Angeles and pairing them with the top guys like Austin Matthews and whatnot. So I think that Moore could really sneak in, and that third line for Los Angeles could be a really, really intriguing uh, GPP play. And then Evangelista for Nashville it does skate on top power play unit uh, with Forsberg and O'Reilly and Josie. Uh, so at 3.9K, anybody that cheap getting top power play unit uh, is going to have a little bit of interest. He does skate, I believe, on the third line for Nashville. I'm trying to picture it right now. It's here, second or third line. Uh, so he isn't paired with Forsberg or Forsberg or O'Reilly at even strength. Uh, but still, I think the value is there. Again, He's kind of like uh, Dubois in that he's not going to give you much of a floor, but the opportunity is going to be presented. Quinn Hughes for Vancouver. Uh, he, this guy is just on the ice for half the game, essentially. Uh, he's routinely seeing 25-plus minutes a night of ice time, which is just unreal. Uh, it's one of the tops in the entire league. He's going to be generating shots uh, to go along with it. So generating shots, got chance to light the lamp uh he's also going to be uh in play for assists especially since he gets that top uh power play unit time uh on a vancouver power play unit that's looked very solid to start the season facing off against the nashville pk that has been dreadful uh throughout the first 10 games of the season and then we're going with Klingberg here. Uh, I mentioned Riley is the defender on the second power play unit for Toronto. 
Klingberg uh, does go on the top power play unit. He's going to be skating with uh, Nylander and Tavares and Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. So if you do want to go with Matthews, Marner, uh, whatever, you compare Klingberg, just get that uh, power play correlation. You can see the ranks. These are all 2023 stats. Uh, these are 2023 save percentages so far. And yeah, so that kind of covers it. So uh, thanks for watching. Good luck in your contest, uh, and we will see you tomorrow.